Good evening, one and all. We welcome you all to the International Webinar Series on Holistic Health, Well-Being and Sustainable Development 2022-2023, commemorating Azadi Kamrath Mahotso, nation celebrating 75 years of independence, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals 2015 to 2013, as part of awareness and campaigns and World Health Week and World Health Month 2023 with the theme Health for All and India's G20 Presidency and also World Health Organization's 75th birth anniversary. So with this all, In collaboration with Sri Holistic Health Foundation India and Sri Research Institute Center for Art, Sciences and Wellbeing. Before we start our sessions, let's take the blessings of Almighty. With the blessings of Almighty, we shall continue with uh, today's commemorations. Today, we are commemorating three weekly commemorations for the year and then we'll move on to daily commemorations. This week is commemorated as Intergenerational Week in UK. So the intergenerational week was started as an online campaign. To bridge
Yeah, the intergenerational week was started as an online campaign to create a bridge, to bridge a relationship gap between generations. In addition to fostering friendships among generations, the campaign aims to inspire and encourage knowledge exchanges, ideas, and moments. In other words, if you are a member of lost generation, silent generation, millennial, generation Z, or generation alpha, this campaign is for us or for you. This campaign celebrates ideas, practices, and possibilities which allow individuals from seven generations to establish genuine friendships together. So it, it began in 2020, founded by Monica Trust in a non-profit organization in the UK. This was a charity organization based in Bristol, United Kingdom, founded by 1925 by the Wills family. So it devotes time and assistance to the residents of its community and its launch first successful intergenerational campaign from March 2020, 23rd to 29th. Generations Working Together, a Scotland center dedicated to supporting intergenerational projects served as an intergenerational campaign's flagship organization in 2021. The GWT collaborated with a similar group in Northern Ireland, the Cares family in England, and Bridging Generations in Wales. The second campaign was held during the second week of March the campaign took place from 8 to 14, 2021. The second campaign has over 1,20,000 participants and the campaign message is say no to generation yeah. The organizations behind this generation week or intergenerational week or behind the campaign is to inspire individuals regardless of their age, governmental organizations, and non-governmental organizations are urged to embrace the intergenerational practice and aid in connecting people of all ages from each generation coming together in a shared space or shared resources. So this campaign is backed by over 40 organizations such as Ancaster House, University of Strathclyde, Glasgow, Citadel, and Led Scotland, to name a few. While this campaign is taking place only in the United Kingdom, the organizations behind the campaign intend to make it a global movement. The Intergenerational Campaign Week is officially launched in March. Generations Working Together takes over leadership of the Intergenerational Week campaign and partners with other organizations in 2021.
The intergenerational week campaign gains over 398 participants in online events with over 3 lakhs uh, 24,350 views and over 9,600 social media engagements. The British Broadcasting Company covers the intergenerational campaign week in 2021. And the intergenerational campaign week is set to go global in 2022. Intergenerational week is a campaign week celebrated across the United Kingdom and is an event by a charity organization, non-profit organizations, which also runs a retirement village for the elderly. So this week is also commemorated as National MS Week in United Kingdom. MS Awareness Week is observed annually on the date decided upon the National MS Society. Uh, MS stands for multiple cellulosis. So it's all about raising awareness for the most common immune disorder affecting mankind, multiple cirrhosis. The condition affects millions of people worldwide and has been amongst us for over a century. The National MS Society established this week not only to help raise awareness of the condition, but also to provide resources to those affected by it. During this week, millions of people joined several talks, events, organizations and so on with the hope of gaining knowledge on the disorder to help themselves or around them. Multiple cellulosis is the most common immune disorder, immune system disorder that affects the central nervous system, affecting over 2 million people worldwide. Common as it may seem, several people are still clueless about the disorder, its symptoms and generally how it affects the human body. If you are one of these or those people, read on to know all about it and share information and create more awareness. So multiple cellulosis is a demyelinating disease that affects the brain and spinal cord due to damages to the insulation covers. These damages can disrupt the free flow of signals through the nervous system, which can lead to a variety of problems, physical, mental, or psychiatric. MS can occur in isolated attacks or can build into progressive forms. Some symptoms of this condition may include partial blindness, sensation, and coordination issues and weakening of the muscles. The condition was first officially diagnosed as a distinct disease by a French neurologist in the late 1800s. And since the 20th century, there has been a deal of progress in the diagnosis and treatment of MS. Although there is no certain cause for the treatment of MS, diagnosed individuals may undergo physical and occupational therapy to improve motor function. There are also medications and certain alternative treatments that help to improve function after an attack and to prevent new attacks. The National MS Society created MS Awareness Week to raise awareness for this condition as well as give affected individuals the platform to tell their stories. They hold different events to promote the cause and is observed annually on a week that is determined by the organization. So the chronically ill case of Dutch Saint Ludiana of Shadon becomes one of the first cases of MS to be documented in 14th century. The son of the Duke of Sussex begins journaling a detailed experience of his struggle with MS in 1822. French neurologist Jean-Martin Charcot is the first person to recognize the disease 
and established a basis for diagnosis in 1868. Theories about the causes and treatments began to appear in 1900s. MS Awareness Month is observed all through March to raise awareness about MS. The symbol of MS awareness is an orange ribbon adorned with butterflies. The butterflies represent the shape of the brain through an MRI and the multiple colors of the butterfly represent the constantly changing symptoms and unpredictability of the MS. So World MS Day is observed globally on May 30th and it was established by the Multiple Cellulosis International Foundation and the campaign focuses on different themes each year. So research shows that vitamin D helps lower the risk of MS as well as to reduce relapses in affected individuals. According to the NANDS, National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke, there are twice as many young women affected by MS than men. The symptoms of MS vary and often overlap with other conditions, making it difficult to diagnose. A lot of uh, immune responses shut down during pregnancy, which leads to an improvement, improvement in MS systems. Only 15% of the people with MS have a family history of it, and it's not all that hereditary. It's, this week is all about raising awareness of all things concerning multiple cellulosis. This helps educate people on this condition, and it also allows them to understand how to handle individuals affected by it. And it also uh, allows those affected to tell their stories and also it provides support for those affected by the condition. This is done through research documents, support groups, and also online support. And also sheds light on all possible ways these support systems can be reached. This week is also commemorated as Go Diaper Free Week in US and it is celebrated across the country to encourage parents and caregivers to wear diapers and instead focus on their toddler's cues. Potty training is a huge part of child's development growth and using what is called elimination communication will help parents navigate the process without an over-reliance on diapers. With improved communication, caregivers are able to better support their toddler's need to eliminate waste in the toilet. Over time, elimination communication helps children feel more control over the use of toilets. So this week basically is based on the principle of elimination communication. This encourages parents and caregivers to focus on their babies and their overall timing, signs and signals that they need to urinate or go to potty. The intention is that over time, parents will be able to anticipate their baby's needs to eliminate waste and get their babies to an appropriate place on time. An important part of EC elimination communication is that it lets children get into toilet training at a very early age. It also cuts out the part of toilet training which forces children to hold on to their waste and the possible health complications of that. Elimination communication is also called infant potty training or natural infant hygiene. This practice is gaining popularity because it is a gentle way of helping children with their potty training without forcing them in any way. Most parents who use elimination communication still use diapers, but only as a backup for busy or difficult days rather than full-time usage. And Go Diaper Free Week was started to support parents and caregivers who want to practice elimination communication by giving them resources and a support network, rather than leaving parents to try and fumble their 
way through the process, this week gives parents to access to different levels of elimination communication and the methods to practice. It also offers follow-up support for the parents who find the things have gone every. So Laurie Bookie writes about the concept of elimination communication in her book, Conscious Toilet Training in 1979. The Natek publishes a convenient pamphlet called Elimination Timing in 1994. Ingrid Boer offers extensively to elimination communication in this book, encouraging caregivers to avoid diapers, the book on going diaper free in 2001. Andrea Olson practices easy and starts Go Diaper Free Week to encourage other parents in 2011. So communication, communicate with your baby, encourage them to eliminate before going to bed and then ensure toilet is accessible for your baby at night. And elimination communication is a long-term objective and it works. Traditional potty training should not start early as it can cause health problems. The first step to trying, especially this is, uh, you know, invest in, uh, actually in India we have, you know, a different kind of practice that is followed and uh, uh, naturally come, uh, you know, get trained. But nowadays, uh, both the parents are not pro in the joint families or uh, where they are living separate and often, you know, they are also more uh, not used or not uh, have not much experience about this family or child rearing practices because lack of exposure or concentrating too much on education and career, they often do not get time and living in the nuclear families. So this is one of the major reasons today, even the youngsters, millennials and young adults are facing problem uh, with the parenting and child rearing practices as well. So nowadays it is uh, becoming mandatory even uh, to, you know, the couples before uh, getting into pregnancy or once the, uh, they decide to uh, take up the responsibility. Now, even the adults, the young couple are being counseled at hospitals and tra are training, uh, are provided classes in the training counseling centers for being prepared, uh, for making them, you know, being prepared for the parenting. So as with all these aspects of parenting, things are easier with support and lets all the caregivers of your baby know that you are planning so that they can support you and reach out to the wider online community for tips. So elimination communication is a learning curve, but it is less time consuming than diaper changes or potty training. Elimination communication can take different forms according to the convenience of the caregivers. It doesn't have to be full-time. Even if your children have passed potty training, they can use elimination communication methods in the future. Older children can also benefit. Western parents are new to elimination communication in other cultures. It is ultimate potty training method. It has been practiced for ages. And in 1957, 82% of babies were potty trained by 18 months. So we want to try elimination communication because it feels less forceful than traditional potty training in the West. And we want to practice early potty training and empower our babies to be independent and also reduce responsibilities uh, on the parents or caregivers. Elimination communication looks daunting and 
we love the idea of the week to trying out with the support from other parents and caregivers and experts. So single use diapers especially result in lot of waste generation and causes a huge pollution and also causes lot of sanitation and health hygiene issues. So we want to reduce consumption and elimination communication helps us gently do that. Today is World Malaria Day. And today is also commemorated as World Penguin Day. So, World Malaria Day is being celebrated today. Uh, today. And it's a breakthrough moment for the treatment of malaria. Just two days before the World Malaria Day 2019, doctors in sub-Saharan Africa began immunizing children with the first uh, malaria vaccine. So this is a welcome news. Health experts predict that the medicine would save the lives of tens of thousands of children every year. As recently as 2016, the world experienced 216 million new cases of malaria. Mosquitoes may seem like an annoying summertime pest to people in many countries, but in others, a bite can be deadly. World Malaria Day, organized by World Health Organization, falls on April 25th. While Malaria Day is not contagious, anyone can get it. Symptoms include fever, sweat, chills, headache, malaise, muscle aches, nausea, and vomiting. Spanish invaders brought malaria to the Americas in 1500s, and colonies, colonizers and missionaries used a cinchona tree bark to treat malaria, which is also known as fever tree in 1600s. And a French scientist purified quinine from the Chino, uh, cinchona bark and found it effective for malarial fevers. In 1821, a British doctor, Ronald Ross, proved that malaria is transmitted by mosquito and he has won the Nobel Prize in 1902. So malaria was largely eradicated in the West due to DTT. Eradication followed in many countries across the globe since 1940s to 1970s. And the day provides education and information about malaria on a global scale. In May 2007, World Malaria Day is established. So education is the key. So keep sharing the information which will raise awareness about this deadly but avoidable disease. While the progress is being made on reducing the number of new malaria cases, the disease continues to kill hundreds of thousands of people every year. Sub-Saharan Africa in the region is highly most affected. Malaria killed 4,35,000 people in 2017. In order to reach the target, the World Health Organization uses World Malaria Day to highlight the need for regular investment and continued political commitment 
for malaria prevention and also have a plan to reduce mortality rates by 90% over the next decade. And this day is an opportunity for health organizations involved in malaria prevention to share stories of how they are conquering the disease. Today is also commemorated as World Penguin Day in US. And this day aims to raise awareness about these flightless birds to preserve their species so that future generations get to see these elegant and remarkable creatures. This day coincides with the annual northern migration of Adelie penguins, a pattern that is inherent and conserved across generations. There are eight species native to Antarctica. Most penguins are monogamous and have unique calls to assist them to find their mates in large groups. Most species lay up to two eggs in a season, while the king and emperor penguins lay only one. Alarmingly though, of the 18 known living species, 10 have been listed as endangered. So this celebration or the commemoration of penguins was created at McMurdo Station, an American research center on Ross Island, where researchers discovered that Edil penguins start their migration around this day each year. So began uh, World Penguin Day as to commemorate the event and raise awareness about these creatures. This day encourages people to learn more about penguins, the dangers they encounter, their environment, and their contribution to the environment. Penguins differ considerably in size from large emperor penguin, reaching heights of over three feet and seven inches to the little blue penguin, which is about 13 inches tall. Historically, giant species of penguins existed that grew almost six feet high and weighed over 176 pounds. Penguins are highly adaptive. to aquatic life with their wings that have evolved into flippers and their excellent swimming abilities where species like the emperor penguin can reach deep depths of 1800 feet. Penguins are disguised to protect themselves against predators from above and below. Their glossy feathers hold air in them and helps to both keep them warm and help them stay afloat. These extraordinary creatures are spread over the southern hemisphere from Antarctica to the Galapagos Islands. Penguins are famous for their dedicated chick hatching endeavors due to adults and amazing survival instincts, such as huddling to stay warm during icy winters. Our appreciation for penguins has inspired the creation of movies and books such as Penguins of Madagascar and Mr. Popper Penguins, yet they face extinction where a concerned effort is needed to help reduce our carbon footprint and prevent pollution to preserve their habitat. So National Penguin Day starts in 1972 when Jerry Wallace marked the start of the migration of the adult penguin on his wife's calendar in 1972. So the critically acclaimed French documentary follows the annual movements of Emperor Penguins, the March of the Penguins in 2005. Researchers estimate that by 2100, at least two thirds of the emperor penguins colonies will have dramatically declined. An alarming study in 2018, 2022 will mark 50 years of the official celebration of the penguins, uh, 50 years of penguin day in 2022. So this year it is 51st year. 
So penguins do fly through water using their wings called flippers to propel themselves through the water rather than air. Because water is much denser than air, penguin wings are shorter and stouter than wings of the birds that fly through the air. Penguins are also much heavier than smaller sized flying birds and have solid bones rather than weight saving air filled bones. So that's why penguins are birds, but they can't fly in the air. Penguins defend themselves and their nest sites with their beaks and wings. They bite fiercely and also use their thick strap like wings to beat their opponent. Blue penguins and most of the crested species are regular fighters, while yellow-eyed penguins rarely fight. The diet varies between species in some cases, location. This include a wide range of fish, squid, octopus, and ephesids, that is, uh, you know, shrimp-like animals. Some of the species of penguin target surface cooling fish species while other are mid-water or bottom feeders. So this is a perfect opportunity to gather information about these amazing animals. So penguins, a coming of age documentary about an idyllic penguin named Steve, who joins millions of other males to start his own family, despite the perils of Antarctica. So penguins are gifted divers. King penguins can dive down to 1,125 feet. While gentle penguins reach depths of 600 feet. Penguins digest their food very quickly, which is why very fr they frequently have to poo every 20 minutes. The black and white color of the penguins provides camouflage so that they can't be seen by predators above and below them. Their counter shading protects them from predators. Gen 2 penguins can swim at a speed of 22 miles per hour and are the fastest swimmers. The oldest penguin fossils are millions of years of old, so penguins have existed since antiquity. Penguins are not only visually appealing, but are most skilled birds in the animal kingdom. They are capable of holding their breath underwater for 20 minutes and can swim around five minutes faster than an Olympic swimmer. Penguins are birds, although aquatic and flightless, they live in Southern Hemisphere, gracing their habitat with their beauty. World Penguin Day is dedicated to these exceptional creatures and they are unique. In maintaining ecological balance, penguins serve as food for leopards, seals, and sharks. They also contribute to the food chain by preying on krill, squid, and small fish. Today is also uh, a day dedicated, commemorated for International Noise Awareness Day. It helps spread awareness about the effects of noise on our welfare and health. Several noise pollution related events takes place around the country. They include lectures that aim to teach people about the effects of noise on public health. Founded by the Center for Hearing and Communication, CHC, in 1996, International Noise Awareness Day is an opportunity to spread awareness about the effects of noise pollution on our mental and physical health. The global campaign is observed worldwide, such as Germany, Italy, Brazil, Chile, Spain, and the United States. A common effect of noise pollution is hearing loss. Several everyday activities and events generate a lot of noise. For instance, loud music from smartphones and other listening devices can cause hearing damage. Similarly, fitness classes, entertainment venues, concerts, noisy restaurants, and sports bars generate a lot of noise. 
hearing loss results when we constantly exposed to loud sound. Loud sound. The louder the sounds, the faster the hearing damage occurs. The length of exposure to loud sounds also affects the amount of damage. However, personal hearing protection devices like earplugs or now or noise cancelling ear muffs can protect the ears from the damage. So noise affects people's health, wellness, safety, and comfort. However, most people don't even realize the impact of noise on their mental and physical well-being until too late. So this day aims to teach people what they need to know to protect their hearing and keep themselves physically and mentally hit. It also shows that the people can maintain healthy hearing in their old age by taking certain precautions and avoiding specific situations. So the US establishes public policies to address noise pollution in 1970s, and the Congress passes the Noise Control Act to protect public health from noise pollution in 1972. Around 20 million Americans experienced permanent hearing loss in 1978. About 12 to 15 percent of the people in Germany experienced noise levels of 85 decibels or higher, leading to significant hearing losses in 2001. So living in a noisy area can affect a child's brain development and language acquisition skills. People have won many lawsuits over noise pollution. However, it is not a crime. Noise pollution can lead to both episodic tension headaches and chronic headaches. So we are carried away by listening to music. It is important to remember, protect the health of your ears by lowering the volume. You don't need to go loud to get into the rhythm. You can celebrate this holiday or commemoration by avoiding activities where you can contribute to noise pollution. This can include shouting or honking. In the US, about 48 million people experience noise-induced hearing loss. Hearing loss currently has no cure. It can only be managed. Many Americans have reported a loss of hearing due to diabetes or cancer. Research has shown that Hearing loss affects people aged 12 to 24, 12 to 64. Only one in five people with hearing loss use hearing aids in the US. So not many people are using hearing aids. So it creates awareness. People learn more about effects of noise pollution and why they should not listen to songs at the highest val volume. The spread of information about noise pollution encourages more people to take measures to protect their hearing. This helps them stay healthy for a long time. And it makes us safer. We make our environment safer when we continuously reduce the noise we make. Lack of noise pollution allows us to stay alert. So this day is also commemorated as International Financial Independence Awareness Day for workers to include plans for becoming financially independent in their careers. No one wants to pay bills with difficulties on retirement, but many are ignorant of how to go about it, avoiding that. This day educates and promote, prompts you to take charge of your finances and practice the proven theory of small saving a small percentage of your monthly earnings for some time. In the long run, you will also then have enough to become financially independent. With increasing difficulties in the economic sectors worldwide, it is also impossible for many to boost financial security. However, with the right guidance and planning, a promising future can be almost guaranteed. Everyone wants to be financially independent, but few know the right steps to take to achieve that. 
and this is why a group of well informed individuals who knew the power of financial independence decided to create a day to suggest feasible plans for workers to attain it so this day codified 425 began in 2019 it was primarily created to enjoin workers especially those planning on retiring to imbibe the 4% and 25 rules of gaining financial independence the 4% rule implores workers to withdraw 4% of their annual investment to fund their retirement and increase it in the event of inflation the 25 rule tells workers that they are required to save for their retirement years that is 25 times their yearly expenses the organizers of this commemoration believe imbibing these rules will guarantee loyalist outright financial independence even after retirement even though the campaign only began to be observed in 2019 there has been significant movement towards gaining financial independence earlier in 2010s the fire financial independence retire early movement began during that time the movement drew inspiration from wiki robin and joe domingas 1992 the best seller your money or your life and the jacob lund fiskers 2010 book early retirement extra the two books suggest living a prudent life and describe the relationship between saving rates and retirement age a marker for workers to use in determining their retirement age the 2011 blog mr money mustak helped popularize the fire movement and in 2018 it got important coverage by the mainstream media it is also important to be financially independent to have control over the financial life that is to be able to to cater one's needs even after retirement over some time is a worthwhile goal proposed by senator elizabeth warren the basic rule is to divide up an income after tax deductions and then allocate it as follows 50% on needs 30% on bonds and putting away 20% to savings according to the federal reserve data the average amount of retirement savings for 65 to 74 year olds is over dollars 4 4 lakhs 26000 so everything is achievable if honest intentions are made so commemorate this day by making an intention to imbibe the 425 method of financial independence so make a strong resolution to be firm in abiding by the plans you make on the day when determination meets good intention success becomes the word now that you have learned about financial independence and celebrate the rest of the day by informing close ones about it nothing beats up a group of friends and families who are all financially buoyant or retired those who have not registered for today's webinar can reg register you can find the link in the chat box relying on social security payments alone won't sustain carlos das junior founder of das wealth llc in lake mary said americans are far behind in retirement savings most workers put their hopes on pensions that amount to little and forget to make plans for their retirement most retirees believe they have little money left to live but their retirement duration 
could extend to few decades, could last more than expected. Retirement plans are best if done for a long retirement time as life expectancy has significantly increased. One of the main reasons on these days, it teaches us to be financially disciplined, such as we can say this is for this and this is for that, and still say this goes to the piggy bank. Work on your financial discipline starting from today. Most people are scared of retirement. With the awareness this day brings, we get to learn ways by which to conquer the major fear factor that drives retirement phobia. Putting the 425 plan preached on the day into action ensures we are all less independent or less dependent, sorry, less dependent on government aid and close relatives after retirement. Independence is what we should strive for. Today is also commemorated as International Delegates Day. It recognizes delegates who are a key part of United Nations. Without them, the UN wouldn't exist. As representatives of their governments, UN delegates are committed to the spirit of multilateralism. They all work together under the United Nations to help solve problems worldwide. Delegates participate in the discussions at the UN General Assembly and other international forums. They vote, but their votes aren't counted unless a head of the state or government is in attendance. The delegates were chosen by their governments. Because of this, they have to act in their country's best interests. Delegates from different nations exchange their views and ideas at the United Nations. When high-ranking politicians are not present, the delegates speak and vote on behalf of their country at the UN General Assembly and at other gatherings where Security Council is represented. The delegates represent their countries. They are not self-appointed, so they tend to support the political interests of the governments who sent them. Delegates from 50 countries came together in San Francisco on April 25th, 1945. After the devastation of World War II, they aimed to set up an organization that would promote peace and impose rules on the post-war world. More than 850 delegates attended the conference, which lasted for two months, determined to set up an organization that would preserve peace and help build people a better world. Representatives of more than 80% of the world population People from every religion and continent gathered. On June 26, 1945, two months after the first meeting, the 50 countries signed the United Nations Charter. The United Nations Organization's establishment in 1945 resulted from the signing of United Nations Charter, mm -hmm. which enshrines the principles that shape the organization's work. The UN now comprises 192 member states and is guided by its charter with set of purposes and principles. On April 2nd, 2019, the United Nations General Assembly designated April 25th as International Delegates Day to commemorate the signing of the United Nations Charter in San Francisco. The first step in is convincing your country that it needs a youth representative at UN General Assembly. Once your country establishes a position for a youth representative, it will have to initiate the selection process and you can also become a youth delegate. So the General Assembly coordinates the work of the United Nations discussing problems and solutions to global issues is the largest body of the United Nations. The United Nations Chief Administrative Officer is the Secretary General, currently Antonio Guterres of Portugal, who controls the United Nations. 
United Nations has six official languages. The languages are Arabic, Chinese, English, French, Russian, and Spanish. The site separates stories by world regions, topics, and timelines, and has its own news site. There are 36 agencies and programs in the United Nations, the sum of which is known as UN Family, and has 36 specialized agencies, programs, and partnerships. The emblem consists of two olive branches, which signify peace and map of the world, which signify which signifies the organization commitment to the world peace. The United Nations currently have 196 member states. The only four countries that are not UN members are Kosovo, Palestine, Taiwan, and Vatican City. It appreciates delegates, their efforts, and their hard work to make their world better. So it is a special day to commemorate, celebrate achievements of those who have contributed to the advancement of the society. It's a time when we can pause and reflect on how far we have come as a species and what our future holds. So delegates play an important role in ensuring that the needs of their constituents are met. They also provide valuable insights into the association can serve better its members. On this day, we learn and understand the importance of delegates. Today is also commemorated as National Drug Take Back Day, which is sponsored by Drug Enforcement Agency and is commemorated in US. Its goal is to keep public aware of the dangers of prescription, drug use and misuse. Many Americans don't know how to safely dispose the prescription drugs that have been sitting in the medicine cabinet past their prime. Using these expired drugs or using someone else is dangerous and puts both the public and environment at risk. Thousands of Western European babies suffered from birth defects resulting from thalidomide, a sleeping pill promoting US authorities to prohibit the drug from entering American markets in 1962. With the FDA Act of 1988, the FDA joined the Department of Health and Human Services to conduct research, enforce laws, educate the public and provide information on drug abuse and drug current drug policy, the FDA Act of 1988. The Office of Drug Control Policy reported on the heavy use of heroin by youth and young adults. Young heroin uses skyrockets in 1996. The Drug Safety Board, focusing on issues around the drug safety, formed as a collaboration between public and private entities in 2005. So more people die from prescription drug abuse than traffic accidents, according to the Centers for Disease Control, CDC. It will hospitalize you about 1,20,000 Americans land in the hospital each year after overdosing on painkillers. American rural areas suffer from the highest loss of life due to prescription painkiller overdoses. Legally, prescribed painkillers pills are now the number one cause of the fatal overdoses, according to CDC. A whooping 70% of the teens who abuse prescription drugs include lots of reasons for doing so, including the need to relax and peer pressure Amazingly, some teens don't even know they have started abusing the drugs in the first place. So National Drug Take Back Day occurs every six months. The DEA started this campaign so that public world understand how important it is for prescription drugs to be disposed of safely. That way they won't fall into the wrong hands, illegal drugs and paraphernalia 
as well as inhalers and blood test strips aren't part of the campaign. When prescription drugs are disposed of improperly, it puts us all in harm's way. Never flush expired prescription drugs down the sink or toilet unless the label of bottle says so. Locate a DE approved location or do it safely yourself. Remove drugs from the bottle and mix them with the dirt. Use coffee grounds, kitty litter or something similar. Then place the drugs in a sealable bag and check into the garbage can. If you are still unsure, ask your friendly neighborhood pharmacist for advice. According to the 2015 National Survey on Drug Use and Health, over 6.4 billion Americans abused controlled prescription drugs. Many of these drugs were snatched from a friend or family member's medicine cabinet. The DEA considers medications that fall into wrong hands a safety and environmental issue affecting all of us. That's why National Drug Take Back urges the proper disposable of prescription drugs and hopefully saves lives. Today is commemorated as National Telephone Day in US. Today is also commemorated as National DNA Day. Scientists, biologists, and genetics enthusiasts come together to observe National DNA Day, celebrating the discovery and research into DNA and the scientific advancements that help make progress possible. Organized annually by the Human Genome Research Institute, National DNA Day encourages people to learn more about the science that makes them genetically unique. On April 25th, 1953, molecular biologist James Davy Watson's academic paper presenting DNA's double helix structure, which he co-authored with British molecular biologist Francis Crick and Maureen Wilkins, was published in the scientific journal Nature nine years later. The three scientists were awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or medicine for unearthing the molecular structure of nucleic acids and its importance for genetic information transfer in living beings. On April 14, 2003, the Human Genome Project, an international scientific research project with the goal of determining the base pairs that make up human DNA and identifying all genes of the human genome was declared complete. The project lasted for 13 years, finishing two years ahead of schedule and was publicly funded by the US government. It originally set to map the nucleotides contained with the human haploid genome, but scientists quickly realized that the genome of any given individual is completely unique. So mapping the human genome involved mapping the DNA of a small number of individuals and then piercing them all together to create a complete sequence for each individual chromosome, meaning the complete human genome is so a mosaic rather than representative of any one individual. Following the completion of human genome project, both the Senate and House of Representatives proclaimed April 25, 2003, DNA Day and April as Human Genome Month. The day marked 50 years since Watson, Crick and Wilkins academic paper was published and the month itself was considered significant in genome discovery. However, they only declared it a one-time celebration rather than an annual holiday. Since then, National DNA Day events and celebrations have been hosted by the National Human Genome Research Institute in order to encourage further research as well as celebrate and continue to acknowledge all of the hard work they have been dedicated to the study of DNA. 
on an average siblings who share the same mother and father excluding identical twins appear to be 25% genetically identical and 50% half identical this occurs because each child gets 50% of their genetic makeup from their mother and 50% from their father meaning 25% from each has a potential to be genetically identical while the other 50% is a slightly different genetic pattern passed on to each child so there is 90% chance that the third cousins will share enough dna for a relationship to be detected but only a 50 chance that you will share enough dna with the fourth cousin for the relationship to be identified this is because of the random way that autosomal dna is inherited causing third fourth and more distant cousins to not necessarily have any detectable half identical regions the human genome project estimated that humans have between 20000 and 25000 genes however genes do not code for proteins in humans genes vary in size from a few few hundred dna bases to more than 2 billion bases every person has two copies of each gene one passed down from each parent most genes are the same in all people but less than 1% of the population genes are slightly different alleles are the forms of the same gene with small differences in their sequence of dna bases making up small differences to each person's unique physical features so dna is an acronym from deoxyribonucleic acid which is a molecule containing the genetic code of organisms national dna was first celebrated on april 25 2003 50 years after the discovery of dna's double helix structure in 2003 the senate and house of representatives celebrated april as human genome month because it was the month that marked the completion of the human genome project as well as the month where biologists Watson, Crick and Wilkins published their findings on the DNA's double helix structure 15 years earlier due to the scientific breakthroughs by the HGP and Watson, Crick and Wilkins we now have programs such as 23 and me and ancestry in order to track our family history through our DNA So fulfill your curiosity and learn more about yourself and your family by investigating or investing in a DNA test. The National Human, Human Genome Research Institute hosts annual D- National DNA Day events. If you'd like to attend a local event or host one for your city, check out their events page. The fastest way to learn about your genetic history with some added allegorical context is through the stories of your family members through though family stories are often like decades long games of telephone where some information may not be completely accurate there's a sense of pride that comes from hearing the stories that lead you to being able to exist today so it acknowledges advancements in scientific discovery we recognize the efforts that lead us to the knowledge we have access to today and continue research that will lead to discoveries of tomorrow it encourages people to learn more about their genetic history and brings us closer to our roots this day feeds the sense of belonging by encouraging us to take the divine into learning more and who we are and who we came from from genetic history to gene editing there's a lot of to learn when it comes to the structure and function of genomes the public is encouraged to access any and all available information to learn more about their genetic makeup and the molecular biology of all living things today is also commemorated as national hair stylist appreciation day in us and they are excellent listeners whether we are describing that celebrity haircut 
we want to copy or talking about our family, spouses, friends, or kids. They act as our stand-in therapist and confident. They are artists, perfectionists, color chemists, angle mathematicians, supportive therapists, and more have influence on their, how we feel about ourselves and how we view others. Today is also commemorated as National Library Workers Day, recognizes the importance and contributions of the library staff who keep our libraries running while we get lost in the wonderful books. Libraries are more than a place for borrowing books. They reflect the needs and expectations of our community. And library workers are ones fulfilling those needs and expectations by making information books and resources more accessible. Libraries work because they work. Today's public libraries are an important part of the community. They provide books from all over the world and basically every topic imaginable. Librarians are the ones responsible for maintaining this catalog of history. They are masters of research who foster creativity, and knowledge, but owing to the global economic fluctuation, their salaries have shrunk to such a level, it has now becoming difficult for their careers to remain feasible. So acknowledge the efforts of library workers, advocate for library workers, and volunteer at a library. Today is also Parental Alienation Awareness Day. To raise awareness about parental alienation. And it is also a form of child abuse. Sometimes called hostile aggressive parenting can be a form of child abuse according to the behavior of a parent or an adult or child trust such as grandmother or grandfather, aunt, uncle or anyone close to the child, knowingly or unknowingly creating alienation in the relationship between the child and them. But what exactly is parental alienation? Parental Alienation Awareness Day, PAAD, observed in USA, Canada and Bermuda is a special day created as part of global awareness campaign about parental alienation. Parental Alienation Awareness Day aims to highlight to parents and other caregivers the effects that parental alienation could have on their children and educated adults to identify signs that either they or someone close to the child are behaving in a manner that could affect the children. Usually, parenting alienation happens when one caregiver attempts to turn a child against another caregiver. This is often done to persuade the child and to exclude the other parent from the child's life. Some of the most common types of behavior displayed by the parents include Constantly bad-mouthing the other parent, limiting or minimizing the other parent's contact, forbidding the child from talking about or discussing the other parent, faking an expression that the other parent dislikes or they do not love the child, and trying to force the child to reject the parent to make the other distant. Parental alienation may cause terrible psychological, psychological damage to the children that can last long after they become adults. So the term parental alienation is coined by psychiatrist Richard Gardner in 1980s. Sarvi Emo establishes Parental Alienation Awareness Day in Canada in 2005. Due to marketing reasons, the initial date of PAAD is changed to April 25. 
in 2006, people across the globe became aware of the parental alienation and its effects uh, in 2020s. So you can reconnect with an alienated child. You can start by refraining from putting the child amid conflict. You should also refrain from trying to blame the alienating parent, turn enemies, enemies into allies. And child can recover from parental alienation. It is all about resorting relationships for the benefit of the family as a whole. Both the targeted parent and the children can recover from the effects of parental alienation. Weak, frivolous, and absurd rationalizations, lack of ambivalence, absence of guilt, borrowed phrases, and uh, seniors, rejection of extended family, and a campaign of denigration might be signs of parental alienation. If you, if you know a parent who is alienated from their children, do your best to help. You can call them, sit down with them, or take them with them out and listen to their problems. A child constantly and unfairly criticizing a parent can be a sign of parental alienation. Criticism might be a sign. Alienation is not fully internalized even by the most rejecting child. Alienating parents tend to have personality disorders such as narcissism. Long-term effects of parental alienation might even lead to, lead to drug and alcohol abuse and low achievement and has long-term effects. Children with parental alienation doesn't experience or don't experience feelings of guilt for the harsh treatment. Children might grow differently. This day is all about letting the world know about the pressing problem and is extremely harmful to the child's emotional and mental health. We raise awareness about these ill effects on parents and potentially save the world and save the child. Although all of us have soft spot in our hearts for children, most of the time we don't take any action because we, do, we have no clue about how to help them. So this day enables us to help them and gets uh, involved. So today is also commemorated as National uh, Plumbers Day. Since it is a basic necessity, access to water is very important. And water is one thing that everyone needs. So this day is to spread awareness about benefits of the safe and quality plumbing. It allows public to learn more about how to get they get access to water while also giving the chance to show plumbers support and appreciation for what they do. Today is also uh, commemorated as School Bus Drivers Day in US, originated in California, created the day to drop up special public attention to the school bus drivers in California for their enduring and exceptional contributors to the students. And to spread after being established in the state to become a commemorated caution. Children were transported to and from school in horse-drawn carriages in 20th century. The California State Assembly established School Bus Drivers Day in 2009. It is a well-deserved tribute to all the men and women who devote their lives to ensuring that children go to school every day while remaining patient, helpful, and upbeat throughout. So A.L. Luce, a Ford dealer, dealership owner, builds a bus body for a 
1927 Ford Model T school bus in 1927. During a convention, 44 requirements for school buses are adopted, one of which is that buses must always be alone in 1939. The California State Assembly established a school bus driver's day in 2009, and the day celebrates its 10th anniversary in 2019. Bus drivers encounter considerable occupational stressors including traffic congestion, conflicts with passengers, rotating shift schedule, poor cabin ergonomics, and tight time schedules. They need excellent driving skills and knowledge of traffic regulations. Understanding healthy and safety issues would be important. Except for many buses, all buses back to late 80s have been automatic. It's much easier for the driver when in stop, start, count traffic, plus has more re resilience than a clutch. Previously, most were semi-automatic, no clutch, but still a manual shifter, a bit like uh, you find in the modern cars. So praise and thank bus drivers, new bus drivers, handmade treats, play the spot, uh, the school bus. So school buses are the road safest vehicles and school buses were in design without were designed without seat belts, so no seat belts. And a heavy uh, weight of a school bus can reach 20,000 pounds. They are heavy metals on wheels. But nowadays, even for school uh, buses, these belts have been made mandatory. And nowadays, it's come with uh, belts as well. But it doesn't require, basically, but it still uh, is being uh, implemented. School bus traffic laws exist in all 50 states of the United States. Every day, 4,84,041 school buses transport more than 27 million school children in the United States. The commemoration of the day is a heartfelt way of expressing gratitude for the work that school bus drivers accomplish. One is getting kids to and from school safety on time. School bus drivers are likely to feel motivated by all the appreciation they receive on this day. They will be even more motivated to do a good job if they know they are liked and valued. If you happen to be a school, Bus driver, there is no better way to honor your profession than today. Know how precious you are and how important your work is. Today is also Red Hat Society Day, which celebrates of, uh, you know, is a celebration of women's friendships, challenges, and enjoying lifestyle. And today is also National Zuchni Bread Day, which, which takes the advantage of feasting opportunity. Today is also commemorated as National Manipedi Day. It's all about taking care of our names. And today is also National Liberation Day. For Italy. And today is also commemorated as National Lingari Day. Which is basically the, the best standard that decorative garments, which means it is a French word, which means underwear, and the intention is to suggest that underwear is both sophisticated and attractive. And today is also License Plates Day in US. And today is also commemorated as Israel Independence Day. 
and also commemorated as Freedom Day in Portugal. So that's all for the commemorations today. So thank you everyone for joining us. Feedback form has been raised in the form of polls in the chat box. Uh, sorry, uh, on the platform. We request everyone to quickly fill up the feedback form. And also the registration link has been provided in the chat box. Those who have not registered are requested to register on a daily basis every day. Those who are attending daily and also those who are attending. Today, we request everyone to quickly fill up the feedback form. And if you have not yet registered, quickly register using the registration form in the chat box. So those who are willing to present in the upcoming psychology conference, which is being uh, conducted on 27th, that is day after tomorrow, and again on 30th, and from uh, since from 30th to 5th of May. So it's a one week international conference. You can present on any of these psychology related themes and also on health, well being, and sustainable development and how they are related to each other and how they impact each other. So kindly circulate. The flyers have been already circulated. And because of the short time we have, we request everyone to support us and uh, in promoting and uh, you know sharing the international conference information to your circles, to psychology departments, associations, not only psychology, uh, any health-related medical departments in your college, in your universities or around. So it was a great day uh, and it's a wonderful conference, international conference when we daily from 5 p.m. we'll be having sessions and on the first day on 27th and on the second day on 30th. Uh, that is uh, Thursday and Sunday. So Thursday we will be having three conference sessions at 11 o'clock and uh, 2 o'clock, where if you have any doubts, any clarifications, uh, any help regarding conference, you can log in at 11 o'clock or 2 o'clock as per your convenience and you can get your all queries clarified. So though all the information is available on the website, if you still have any information before conference starts, you can get it clarified. Those who are present in paper or those who have submitted all these, if you have any kind of queries, you can log in on uh, 27 at 11 o'clock or 2 o'clock, 11 o'clock in the morning or 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And you can get it clear before the conference starts at 5 p.m. in the evening. So every day from five o'clock, the sessions will start. So it's all first come first serve basis. So if you have any presentations to be made, kindly follow the formalities, it is easy. And uh, as you all know, see, there is no verification that happens. The registration link is there, whether you register or not, the joining link is there. You come join without registration, with registration, you attend sessions and all that goes, you know, without any verification anywhere until you make a request for the certificate. Only when you make a request for the certificate, then all the details will be verified. So till then you will not have any issue, whether you register or not, whether you complete formalities or not. But make sure if you require a certificate, then ensure that you are all filling 
completing the format is in time that will ensure you that when you are selecting when you are opting for a certificate through feedback form it automatically verifies all the data uh, from a central database and it generates a certificate so make sure you are uh, registering your name and all the details properly and you are attending the zoom session with adequate time we have attendance setting a uh, minimum attendance is required and after that ensure you are providing feedback for all sessions or wherever the feedback is provided and finally make sure your uh, you know attendance is uh, marked appropriately and that can be ensured that when you are logging joining the events daily you make sure you are joining you are putting uh, your participant name as your actual name so don't uh, use devices name or any other name or sometimes we be organization's name that is the fine but you add your name also to that so that it is easy for system to identify and map your attendance to respective participant otherwise what happens many people see the if you keep some short name there might be two persons with the same name or say uh, someone like puja two pujas or someone like common names srinivas like that uh, some common names if two three people join especially when more people are there again there will be difficulty so make sure you rename yourself while entering the meeting so that it is useful to identify and automatically generate certificates and those who have completed all the formalities because of these technical reasons because the system is automatically verifying and it, uh, you know generating there is also always a possibility of human error where you have committed some mistake or miss something uh, so there might that will lead to an error in this system so your certificate will not be generated so in that case again the trouble comes here only so you need to provide all the details a format has been put on place uh, where it is available on the website you can easily access it we have positioned in such a way that it is now the third link in the navigation menu so it is you can use the format copy the format and fill in all the details and then send it to the conference or whatever email id at that time it was mentioned so all this you know uh, increases our time and resources wastes our time and resources both yours as well as ours and we don't know daily events are happening when we will get time because already we are overburdened with so many things so it takes lot of time and whenever we get time we generate so there is no timeline for this whenever we get time we generate it can be in one day it can be for one month or it can be two to three months also so we cannot assure you timeline so make sure in the very first place itself first whenever you get any event information you first register whether you attend or not that is secondary if you are willing if you are assuming or if you are willing to present you register for both if it is possible then if you are ready with your presentation then you can send your presentation because that all are not available in the registration form itself you can attach you cannot attach your cv you cannot attach your photo you cannot attach your, you know your ppt all that things are not available in the registration form so you need to send it separately through email 
and there is also a format don't just send ppt and uh, say that you have we should also know whose ppt is that so there is a format uh, provided which from which system automatically picks up the details so use format we request everyone to copy paste the format don't even type also again you will uh, do some errors like spacing or all these you just simply copy the format and paste the format and just type wherever the details like name date a time of registrations all these details you type it and you can send it so to avoid all these you know generally what happens is every time whenever you ask for something you need to check all these details so it is like now you can just imagine many people again after seeing that they come to me and ask sir it is very difficult to remember all these things so just imagine you are the person who are attending and you don't even remember and you are the person you are you know you are presenting and don't you don't even remember when you are presented so that creates you know lot of pressure on and just remember we are having daily events and we are having so many presentations and every day and how we we can remember and we need to go through okay uh, we do remember and we do note it and we do you know verify i mean system we have the system that takes the record of everything but all this there but all are time consuming who has the time to go do same thing again and again again and again and everyone doesn't make send it all once daily one person two person three person keep asking that this this so it's you know to huge waste of time and resources and again you blame the organizers there is no point in that because we have all the records we can show that is it is only your mistake because of which you lost your opportunity to gain certificate we have all the records we can show and there should, there is a proper way channel to communicate you know you post somewhere in some group or some uh, social media platform and again when we are posting something you comment i did not receive certificate is that the way to post there is a way to ask there how we will uh, identify you how we will answer you so there is a way to always you know because you have made mistake you are you did not get your certificate that means you did not understand the instructions properly you have committed some mistake somewhere we are there to help you but you should have patience in the very first place and as long as you are waiting you need to be respectful if you do not respect you will also be not respected again don't get annoyed if we behave the same way as you are behaving so again these all things are have to be kept very important we all are human beings we need to do that's why we have a, you know quality uh, principal approach you know do it right first time otherwise we'll keep uh, instead of you know contacting us so many times after you have realized prevention is always better than cure you can prevent all these just by following instruction simply register before attending only or immediately after you join you join anyway we are sharing or if we forget to share also we can just put a message share registration link we will be sharing so that you can immediately register and that will be done it's it doesn't take even 2 3 minutes also so whenever there is a poll launch you just fill up the poll and keep attending that's all very simple task you know register attend provide feedback wherever it is raised and get your certificate in this small system you are complicating so much every time see very small registration was there initial but now because uh, you are also troubling us 
and we need to remember all these details we need to verify now we are slowly putting that burden to you only. now what you have to remember all those things you have to send all those details. now you are you know feeling that pain you are feeling that burden on yourselves now when we are asking you the details so that's what happens you know unless and until we go through it we never understand what is the pain we are putting to others what is the discomfort what is the you know the, the kind of uh, work we are giving to others so this is all because of not following instructions uh, even so many we provide all the details we provide a website link we on the flyer there is everything we have links they we have seen many people there they do not join any group they, they they do not join google group they do not join whatsapp group they do not join even uh, this calendar and they keep asking uh, they attended all conference and they are now asking uh, where is the co conference website now what should i say you have attended and you don't know where is the conference website and how did you get the registration form so all these silly silly things na you are asking to a that to to a professional and uh, you know asking in like as if you are chatting to someone see these all reflects our own culture and upbringing so you should know how to communicate with the person and these all reflects upon ourselves only what others will be we all everything is recorded what if i all taken screenshot and put on the website this is the way these people are communicating they see how embracing how you know it will be don't do like that when you when we say ourselves as professionals if for me i am taking so much pain that's okay fine but don't do that again you are only going to be the sufferers so let's all work together as a family understand each other this is a great opportunity it doesn't matter either one person join 100 person join we keep talking counseling to clients for hours together if required so for uh, you know minutes together these sessions are also you know like that on for me this is also one counseling session every day so be good to ourselves we will help you out in every certificate don't worry still lot of the after series also you can get your certificate now because we are also busy with all these things daily it is difficult for us also we need to understand so if you really want you know certificate in time you need to submit somewhere be cautious that's all follow the instructions strictly as if you know the uh, everything line by line word by word you follow you complete it everything and you will automatically get no need to ask anyone see when you are joining you are registering are you asking anything anyone when you are joining attending you are not asking anyone so in a similar way while for the certificate also you should not ask anyone only when you do not follow these instructions if you do not complete these instructions then only this problem will come because no where verification is required whether you register or not you can attend and you can provide feedback or if you do not provide feedback all fine you can even present also without registration many people are doing that and uh, again you know because they complete after before because last minute they come and ask you know, there is a procedure there is a time you know this is also an organization you cannot jump like a monkey and come in and say i am doing or, uh, this is not you know we need to maintain records also again so it uh, we need to schedule also but all these things keep happening and you know and later on when you need a certificate make sure again that that's where the problem comes the problem comes when you need a document when you need us to certify you that's where the problem comes 
then you need to complete all the format. So now we see 99.9% .9 are mistakes of the participants and presenters. They do not follow instructions. They do not think, they just assume that other like other platforms, they can get away easily without doing, with doing. No other, even in many conferences, without registration, have we got any presentation or participation certificate? I don't know. Maybe I never had got like anything like that. Maybe if you have got, might be something. But you need to register. Registration is a simple thing. And some complain long form. What is there in long form? That there are basic details only. And half of the form is like whether you have joined uh, you know, this group or link or uh, that also many times people keep telling no, 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 no. Then how you will get information? When you join them only, you, know, you will get regular information. After the event happens uh, or uh, after the event is over, now you keep asking, sir, I did not receive information about that event. How you will get only when you join in the network, now you will be there. And recently, earlier, we were so much fed up with all this and we were not sending emails. All. But now, in spite of sending all emails also, you are again coming and asking where, where is the conference website, now what we have to tell. It is already there three, four times we have sent email. And in that email, conference website is there mentioned. In your WhatsApp, you are getting. Still, you are asking. Now, how irresponsible, how negligible you are. So, all these things we have to be very careful. It's not like, you know, hurting people and giving extra work to people. Sometimes, you know, being too good is also not uh, good in this society. So anyway, just I'm sharing my experiences. So uh, be careful while you are filling up and completing the formalities. It's all you. We, I can't do anything because I have 24 hours. And beyond that, even I can't do anything. So wherever there is a possibility, I'm doing. Wherever there is no possibility, I can't do anything. So that's out of my hands also. So you will only lose the opportunity. You will only lose the set. We'll give it. It's not that we won't give it. But it may take three months. It may take six months. Or it may take one year also. We will do our work. But whenever we get time, we are doing. We will do it. That also. After series, we will issue. We will check again manually also. If required, we verify and we will give it. But till that time, you have to wait. Waiting is only the issue. Time is only constraint. You want to immediately, then you complete all the formalities immediately. Then you can expect within 15 working days that is standard value. So like many times we have given uh, immediately also on the same day, within the week also we have given. When all things are smooth, why we will also delay? We will also finish it off so that we can also free up that event. But when many things are pending, it consumes a lot of time and other things get, uh, you know, troubled and uh, we uh, also need to focus on day-to-day -day activities. Otherwise, they will, uh, they, that work will be pending and again, we will not be able to organize or manage that. So, entire things will go on loop and, you know, it, it will become a disaster. So somewhere we have to draw the line. So whatever we could do within that time, we'll just stand up. Once the time is over, we have to close it because we need to focus on the next coming thing. That is where, you know, things go on pending, pending, pending because we also are helpless. We also don't time find time because like you, we also have all the work and then taking out time is not so easy. And that too, all these details have to be verified and checked. So it takes a lot of time and this resources also. 
So sometimes we have time, but we don't have resource, we don't have system because we are somewhere else, you know, all these things are there. So the best thing is either you blindly follow the instructions or consciously understand the system and ritualistically follow the system. Both the way, it is beneficial for you as well as for us. And blaming all, I have seen so many things. Blame will not do serve any purpose. That is only based of your time and resources only. Again, remember karma is there always. Even when you do something bad, it will hit you back someday or other. Because we are genuine, we are transparent, we are trying to help you. But because of limitations, we have a lot of limitations like you. We, we are not able to do anything at this point of time. We will definitely do whenever time permits. We are doing also. We are organizing so many events and that too also we need to look in. So remember, karma is there. If you do good, you will get good. If you do bad, it will hit you back one day or that. So just be conscious of what you are doing and help us also to take some responsibility you share, keep, help us in getting some speakers, getting some participants. We have seen many times, we have observed also the speakers, some of the speakers who come, they don't even share in their, they have, they maintain their own groups. They conduct a lot of activities. They don't even share in their own groups where we are also part of members. So now you are not only promoting you, yourself are not promoting you. So these things, when we see, you know, it is very, okay, anyway, that's up to you, doesn't matter. But again, a lot of things are there. So all these things are there anyway, that's a different thing. But it was a query in the chat box, so I had to take up this discussion. So ensure that you are completing all the format is then we can ensure that you are getting certificates in time. So if there is anything beyond, it is time consuming. Uh, we are also helpless and we cannot do anything about it. You have to wait until we get time and when that time will come, we don't. Whenever we get it, maybe one, one week, one month or one year, we don't. Whenever we get time, we will definitely wish. You have to wait till that time. And many people we see like, you know, kids, you know, if they go, don't get one certificate and again, they say, I will not attend future events. So it's your loss only. You attend, don't attend, it is your benefit only. For us, it, uh, what, it doesn't matter. Us. So you don't worry about certificates. If you are very particular, you complete formalities, you get your certificate. If you don't get also, why stopping attend? I said, okay, thank you. Don't attend. Because anyway, if you are not following, then it is again an extra burden for you. Now you see how many details we have to verify. Now we have put that all details. Now you only send all your details, then we will that will you know simplify our process. So now we are sharing our burden with you whenever you do some mistake, take some accountabilities, take some responsibility and send us all the details and we will check. So it will save some time. If all the details are correct, you will get certificate. Otherwise, you will not get it. That's as simple as. So these things are there. So now I am also sharing the burden also to you. So thank you everyone. So keep attending all this we have to share. Otherwise, how you will also know what is happening and how difficult it is to manage and other things. Uh, don't take it otherwise. But uh, there are some good, loyal, you know, those who are regularly attending. And they also need to know because when some others say, you know, we know we have all the records, we can show them. Uh, whenever it is their mistake only because everything is there in the system what is there to hide only when they don't have patience or when they don't have this 
they just keep blaming the organizers or blaming the system and all. We have all the records we'll show, take, pick up and we'll share the screen and show where the mistake they did. Okay, thank you everyone. Yeah, see you all tomorrow. Take care, good night.